Hi everyone and welcome to a brand new episode of The Road Less Taken. We are in season 3 and this series is about conversations with people who've made unconventional career choices and excelled at them. Today we have a very special guest, someone who's right at the top of her game and has revolutionized the world of publishing in India. She has worked for many years with top publishers like Bloomsbury, Random House and Penguin. And then she set up Juggernaut Books, which has commissioned and published several hit authors over the last half a decade or so, but also more interestingly revolutionized the mobile reading space in India. Please welcome as our guest today, Chiki Sarkar. Hi, uh, Chiki. Welcome uh, to The Road Less Taken. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Pleasure to be here. All right. I want to begin by taking you back to uh, some uh, childhood memories and how reading was a part of your life when you grew up. Uh, when did the love affair with books start and uh, what what was your favorite book growing up that you used to read and reread? So, you know, I was a very, very lucky little girl because I came from a family of book lovers and journalists and indie publishers. And so we had a ton of books at home. In fact, you know, whichever house I've lived in has had a library, by which I mean a fairly large room with wall to wall books. And the books were all kinds of books. They started from Superman comic books to novels to uh, Playboy magazines, to uh, biographies, to classics. I mean, just the range. And um, I gravitated towards them, I think, naturally. I don't know whether any anyone was pushed. So I remember, and I didn't actually especially love school. So I used to hide in the world of books. And um, really, by the time I was seven or eight or nine, I was bringing books to school and reading it during boring classes. Mm. Um, but uh, so I think I naturally and I, you know, I read everything. I mean, I read all the Enid Blytons. Uh, I read, uh, as I said, Superman comics. I read um, Amar Chitra Kathas. I read Greek mythology. Um, I read classics. Um, I really was very voracious and read virtually anything I could get my hands on. And so you were very clear that a career uh, in, in books is what you were kind of going towards right from a young age? I think uh, anyone who knew me knew I was going to be in the world in that vicinity. So okay. whether it was publishing or journalism or maybe, uh, you know, any ancillary job, it could have even been screenplay potentially mm -hmm. writing or... Uh, but the world of stories was mm. going to be my world. Uh, I think I, an artsy world, media world of stories, storytelling was just going to be the thing I did. Yeah, I think that was very, very clear for both. I mean, I didn't even know have to overthink it. And I don't think anyone who knew me would have thought otherwise. I've had the least uh, surprising career trajectory, I think, of anyone I know in my school. <laughs> would have said, yes, that's expected, you know. Right, right. Uh, and then, uh, of course, you know, you went out of the country, uh, you were uh, with uh, Bloomsbury, uh, then you came back to India and uh, worked with uh, the Penguin Random House. How did these experiences uh, shape you uh, as you were thinking about or uh, as you ventured into Jagannath? So, you know, um, my first job was with Bloomsbury and I was just so excited to have it. I had just finished college. I'd started working five days after my final exams as oh. an undergraduate and I've never stopped working. I never had time off. So I was really very excited. I was in London. I was this young girl. Uh, I was renting uh, a flat with my best friend at the time. I just was so in love with all of it, you know, with mm. my job, with the city, with, with the glamour of it. Uh, I was completely starstruck and that first year in Bloomsbury, I think, you know, uh, as a young assistant, your job is really secretarial. You make a lot of coffee. And in those days, you photocopied a lot of manuscripts. And so I spent a lot of time in the basement where the photocopy machines were. And that's where all the books were kept. Right. And so because uh, I was, you know, photocopying is really boring. Let me tell you, <laughs> you're, you're, you're photocopying 300 page manuscripts 10 times, 20 times. So I read uh, a lot of books then. And so that year, I think I read every book that uh, Bloomsbury published that year. Wow. And, uh, because, you know, what do you do? You're a nerdy girl uh, bored in, in a basement and you are putting these manuscripts in the photocopying machine and you read. And I read and read and read. And I read a ton of books I would never have read 
What, so what my memory of one of those been? early years was just being very enthusiastic, very gung ho, reading a lot, doing everything. You know, uh, when I, it's a thing I would advise anyone: just say, mm -hmm. go for it. Like, you know, I mean, I was a girl who, like, if the office needed cleaning on a Sunday, uh, and someone, you know, someone said, "Oh, will you go? Will Chiki? Can you go and open the door to the cleaner? I'd go and do it." You know, I was, you know, the kid, the yeah. kid with the bright spark in their yeah. eyes just yeah. eager like yeah it's not very cool or anything i was just like yes 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 anything yeah. you want um <laughs> random house was a very different uh case um you know i was 28 uh, i was hungry to prove myself and show my mark in the world mm. i'd been given this prestigious job as editor-in-chief but i really had very little experience to lead up to that prestigious role uh, and I hadn't worked in India. I, you know, I had left India when I was 18 and gone to university and then had these seven years working at Bloomsbury. And I returned as a 28 year old. And, you know, I had to, I mean, nothing particularly traumatic, but I had to make a house for myself in India. I had to, mm -hmm. none of my old school friends were in India, in Delhi. I'd grown up in Calcutta. So I was very lonely. I didn't have friends and I didn't have any professional networks in, in, in mm -hmm. Delhi. So, um, I found uh, the first year incredibly overwhelming. Uh, I cried every single day that year. And, but I also found it very, it may be the most important year of my life. Okay. It was like, because I could tell that it was, a, I, you know, it was like going for a marathon and training mm -hmm. for it. My mom, I could tell that even as I was finding it hard, there were all kinds of muscles in my professional experience that was just being hardened and shaped mm. in a way that it never had been. Um, mm. So it was it was a very intense year, uh, a year of great highs and lows, a year that I will never forget and a year that I feel actually good about looking back because even though I was crying, it was not that, you know, there are two kinds of sadnesses. There's the sadness of despair because mm. there are real tragedies, tragedies yeah. where say, you know, you have no money or, yeah. Some people have died in your life. Real tragedies of, 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 of lacking control, of, of being able to really look after yourself. And then there were hard, hard years of the kind I had where you're being challenged to the top absolute brink. And yes, it's incredibly hard, but it's not that there's tragedy in your life. You right. know? So it's not a year of tragedy. It was just a year of being difficult. Mm. Uh, and it was a difficult that came with learning. It was not a difficult that came with lack of hope. So it was a year that I feel, you know, looking back very positive about. So those two things happened. And then I was in uh, Random House, Penguin Random House for I think five years or so, six years, and then uh, became the publisher of Penguin India. And that was a great leap that actually I was very ready for. Um, in many ways, much easier than the leap into Penguin, into Random House, because uh, in Random House, I was 28 and I knew no one and I knew nothing. Uh, by the time I became publisher of Penguin India, those yeah. muscles had hardened. I was ready to. And so what Penguin India gave me was scale. You know, it was the largest publishing house in the right. country. And I and uh, I, I was leading a team that was larger than I, anything I'd led. There many of these people who were much senior to me, right. um, et cetera. So, uh, so, but, you know, with it was a great learning, but it was not a learning that was you know, in the, in the extraordinary way that right. there was. And then, you know, by those times, you know, by the end of Penguin and Penguin, and then the, com the company Random House and Penguin Mars, so end of Penguin Random House, I was completely ready for Juggernaut in the sense that I had worked in a small company and been mm. helpless. I had worked mm. in a large company and learned scale. Right. Uh, uh, I knew what it was like to do a lot of work by myself which is what happens in a small company. Mm. Uh, but I had learned ambition in a large company, you know, yeah. which large companies give you. And uh, so all of those things were in my DNA, you know, um, the, uh, ambition um, and yet the sort of, you know, I, I used to buy the flowers in our reception in Random House. I, so I, I, I used to do contracts in Random House. I ran publicity campaigns in Random House. So, the idea of like, you know, th those experiences were not so far in my life. And the right. thing when you, the big difference between a big and small company is that, you know, you end up doing more work to, with, in your inner small company. Yeah. 
a yes. range of smaller works. Correct. Uh, and in a big company, these things are stratified in different right. components and departments, mm. and you don't have to do those, right? So, mm. so I I could return to that mode relatively easily because while I had, you know, that memory was still fresh. And yet, Penguin, uh, Penguin had given me huge ambition. You know, I knew, suddenly I knew I could buy, I could make books that sold a hundred thousand copies. What was your uh, What was your biggest hit at uh, at Penguin that you feel? the most happy about that you commissioned this or, or you took this to print? You know, many, but uh, the books that people will remember, I commissioned and uh, in a way, I won't say discovered, but the person I, because, you know, with talent, talent exists. Someone else would have discovered that. <laughs> I was lucky enough to bump into Twinkle Khanna. Oh, uh, nice. And uh, I just loved her writing and I fought very hard for her. I stole her from another publisher. And nice. Uh, and published her at Penguin just as I was leaving. Um, okay. She now is, uh, you know, I published her in Juggernaut, but she was a huge hit just as I was leaving. I published a book called Arushi by Abhi Rukhsen. It's a book I'm very proud of. I published Accidental Prime Minister, ah, which okay. was a book that became a very, very hot book during the 2014 election uh, yeah. used by Prime Minister Modi. Uh, that sold about 100,000 copies in its first year. So those were the big, big successes. When did the spark for Juggernaut come, especially this whole uh, mobile reading uh, kind of approach? Did it kind of build up over a set of experiences or did it kind of come? It really took, uh, I began to ask like, what more could I do? And mm -hmm. were we doing enough? Uh, very hazy, abstract questions. And then, you know, some of it came into focus after I'd like, heard something from a, a talk by another publishing professional or read an article mm -hmm. or whatever. Uh, and so all those things sort of came to my mind. And then at one point while I was in Penguin, I went to see the head of Airtel and said, mm -hmm. could I create a list for Airtel reader users mm -hmm. on, on your phone using my Penguin list? And he said, yes. But I didn't know what that meant really. I mean, what does that mean? I mean, I could yeah. say that. Uh, when I came back and said it to my CEO, you know, he was just like, oh, good for you, Chiki, for being, you know, uh, making, you know, thinking out of the yeah. box, you know. Yeah. He, you know, he was sweet and nice, and but also a little bit dismissive in the way that he was busy and it would seem like a crazy right. idea. So, you know, these ideas were in my head mm -hmm. and bubbling. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I did it. Right. So... So this whole, um, you know, uh, reading on the mobile, I want to ask you two questions about it. One is that, do you uh, yourself and at Juggernaut, do you all see this as a gateway uh, to like reading for people? I know one of your missions is to get more, more people in India to read. Uh, do you see this as a consumption medium in itself or more like a, an entry point for people who won't pick up a book otherwise? And my other question is, what do you do? Do you do you read on the mobile a lot, or are you still the old school physical book reader? I'll answer that question first. I'm omnivorous. Okay. I read everywhere. I read on the Kindle. I read on my phone. I read on laptops. I read print books. Okay. Uh, right now, just before uh, we had the Zoom session, I was reading a manuscript on the phone. Okay. But every night, I'm currently reading a history book that I'm loving, but I'm reading it as a print book by my bedside. Um, but this morning, uh, I was working out of a on a in a coffee shop, and I was reading on my laptop. Okay. But primarily between the phone and uh, and print are my two movements. Um, okay, Jagannath was started in two ways, right? Uh, there, there was a let's call it a um, there was a publisher point of view, and there was a reader point of view. At the reader point of view, it was very simple. I just saw people on the phone. Mm. Uh, and I thought if everyone is going to live on the phone, they will also read on the phone. Right. Uh, you know, and, and uh, certainly they're reading news now on the phone, right? Yeah. New York Times digital subscriptions have right. now outdone their print subscriptions. Right. Uh, so, so that was sort of one thinking and, 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 one, and, and you know, what would it mean? What would it mean to be on the phone, right? The second thing I thought as a publisher, which is different from the reader is that I thought, Publishers have to be totally amphibious. I don't believe that print will die. Right. Uh, in fact, one of the biggest responses I've got when I talk about Jagnaut is, a, is what people say as a criticism, but I've also seen as, 
actually the most interesting and uh, advantageous thing about uh, this business. They said, you know, I love print books. Nothing can beat print. Nothing can beat the feeling of paper and the smell of a print book. Yeah. Now, what does that mean? Yeah. It means that I will not have, I will not, my digital readers are not uh, going to cannibalize my print reading. Right. If the world of print readers are so loyal to their medium, they're not going to move to digital. Right. And let me know that there's a digital readership world. It's happening across the world. It's happening. So, so there's a world that's clearly um, loyal to print. Mm. And there's the world that's, that's reading on digital. And now these words are going to often meet. There might be a person more like me. Okay, there'll be certain books you'll buy on print, certain books you'll buy on digital. Mm. But they're not going to necessarily eat up on each other, right? Yeah. So um, my thing was simple. I thought, how are you truly an amphibious publisher. So, you know, Juggernaut's main income and revenues come out of very, very successful print list. Right. Uh, we have an extremely high functioning, impactful and revenue generating print list, mm -hmm. which includes authors such as Nobel Prize winning, you know, like Abhijit Banji and Esther right. Duflo, uh, down to a Twinkle Khanna and Vijuta Devekar, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, to a Karina Kapoor, to a Karan Johar, to a William Dalrymple, mm -hmm. Um, to a Shamsaran, uh, you know, uh, to a Saurav Gangli, to a Rajat Gupta. I mean, these are all my print lists. Right, right. So I, but the thing I wanted to ask myself is, if, let's say I have this print list. Now, what does it really mean to play online? And I think selling your books a la carte on Kindle is just a boring way to do digital. I mean, you have to play with uh, owning a platform, you have to play with playing with a subscription model, you have to play with breaking up a book in various ways, you have to play with thinking about what would it mean to own data about your customers and how would you use it. Mm -hmm. And you use it not just, you know, on, on your digital platform, how do you use it to commission across the board? I'll give you a very simple example. I know from Jagannath that my biggest readers online are from South India. Okay. Okay. okay? Now, what does that tell? And, and now this data is then, if you match it with Amazon and Flipkart, mm -hmm. their biggest orders come from Bangalore, I think. Okay. 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 Uh, and if you now add it up with other data from print books, uh, you know that uh, the biggest sales of print books for most publishers are Delhi and then it moves to Bangalore. Now, I had, what that means is there's a readership in, in South India and they're willing to pay money, right? Mm -hmm. So what, what has that led us to? It has led us, for example, to create more nonfiction in South, from South India. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I actively think of commissioning books on the Cholas and the Pallavas and the Chalukyas, mm -hmm. perhaps even more when three or four or five years ago, and certainly seven years ago, I was just thinking Mughals, Sultanate. Right. right. Uh, I moved to the South. Right. Now, right. why is that? Because my readership is there, right? And where am I learning it? I'm learning it, of course, across a Amazon and a Flipkart and my print data, but I'm seeing it at a regular basis at a city level out of my Jagannath app. Now, uh, this is not just helping me commission on my digital. Right. Uh, personal finance, I am seeing on my app that in the last five was post COVID, We've seen a spike in personal finance stories, but we're seeing um, a, a, a decline in a ma classic management books. Okay. okay, How to be a better manager, blah, blah, blah. All those, you know, we used to publish Harvard Business School. Those books have gone right down. Yeah. But personal finance, right up. And, and people are, they're not, it's not just free. So, you know, Jagannath, the app plays with free and paid and it's yeah. people are paying for it. So now what does that tell us? That amount of that information, um, I, I'm using not just for, for the app, I'm using it to commission my print, on my print list. My print and my app are the same list. Got it. I mean, I, you know, I, I put up. So, so you, know, there's, you know, there's a kind of, um, the, the, I, you know, the thing I wanted to ask is how do I become a stronger, better, more interesting publisher? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And how does digital help me do that? Mm -hmm. And that has always been the vision of Jagnaut, right? Is to be a better publisher. And to me, it's a no-brainer. We have to play in digital. And we, I don't think traditional publishing plays enough. Right. Like sort of dipping their toes in and yeah. they're not. Yeah, yeah. So uh, one, one question I've always wanted to ask uh, someone like you as a publisher is, you read manuscripts, you know, I'm sure like by the tons uh, through the year, 
but you also read manuscripts across genres right so when you have to read something that is say literary fiction or historical narrative non fiction versus uh, let's say a, a, a thriller or a, or a pulpy book i mean how do you kind of reorient yourself to judge each of these i you know i, I look so the thing is when i was a kid i read everything i read mills and boons and i read tolstoy i read uh, batman comics and i read um uh, uh jane austen um and i read uh nancy drew and i read life magazine i i i read biographies i read criticism um i read akatha christi so you know i think that how you read as a child yeah. uh, the omniverseness i think shapes your reading oh. habits, right and uh so i simply just trust my instincts as a reader which is that you know and i even now i mean in the last year i've read obama's memoirs but i've read daniel silva's thriller and i've read um you know uh chidamanda odiche's yeah. novel i I've, i've read all of them with with attention and loving all of them and been obsessed about all of them and suitable boy and so when i read it i just read at, you know i'm in it uh, and and you know it right in in two or three pages you know it you know you know there's an energy in the book in right. the pages and right. something that this author has done, at least you i mean uh, you know a reading is very personal i don't want to make it an objective thing yeah. that if i like something it means it's yeah. absolutely the best or if i don't like something it's not you know please remember as publishers and this is for you as an author i make mistakes every day i turn down white tiger <laughs> okay so i mean you know there are people who turn down um jk rowling there are people who turn down amish tripathi i mean editors make mistakes every mm-hmm. single day every mm-hmm. single day but we but what i will say is that we read and respond with some sincerity mm-hmm. and uh, and so when i'm reading it i'm just reading it because i've read these books so i i don't i mean i was reading a children's book before i was uh, i got onto this meeting you know two very quick questions to end one is when are we going to see chiki sarkar the author uh, is there a book in the world going to happen any time never, never. okay a okay. million times so i'm a ba- i i'm i you know i think that i i'm someone who works with writers i'll never be one ever okay okay, okay. we shall see and um, the the last question really is uh, you know for uh, for people i mean this show is targeted at people who may want to make like you know unconventional career choices do something that's their passion so if someone's like got this real passion around books and about writing and so on what is the couple of lines of advice that you would give them on how to take something like that forward while loving books is the first base level entry point to the world of publishing you and and by all means try it you know entry level job is fairly easy to get in publishing you have to really ask are you in a way if you'd ask me this at 22 i wouldn't have known that you know what you will discover in the world of publishing is whether the publishing aspect the books aspect or uh, the business aspect the act of selling it the act of pitching it the act of making it sexy the act of taking it out into the world uh whether these things are things you're happy doing or you're excited doing because the publisher is someone who loves book, books but they're also someone who loves selling books right right and you may be the person who loves books and you might hate the selling of books the right yeah. and now i can't tell you whether you have that it's very hard i mean when i uh, hire an editorial assistant i can't tell uh, so what i look for is i want a little bit of gung ho energy mm. i want like a little bit i don't like um, you know if you're a really sensitive thoughtful uh, withdrawn bookworm i'm probably not going to hire you because yeah. i feel like every day of my life is a battle to yeah. get my books heard out into the world and i need someone with that energy and the spark and the can do and of course you read books but you need yeah. all of that energy and the spark and the can do on the top and i think that uh, that's not to say that those are all publishers but many publishers are introverted and quiet and withdrawn but they have to have some steeliness in the right. bottom right and they have to find the world they have to be excited about making hits even the most successful literary publishers in the west make hits it's why they keep their jobs and wow. they love it it's not why they do it they publish many books that are not hits they're all worth it but they love making hits yes. and somewhere if you don't love that or you discover that it may not be the career for you so 
you know, that is what I would say. It is a, also a low paying job, mm. even right to the very top. So for example, even though I'm absolutely the top of my job level, my salary is equal of a mid, mid level salary of a big multinational company. Mm. Mm. Uh, uh, you know, uh, um, you know what you might get paid in television, for example, mm. at the mid level to high level. Uh, yeah. would be equivalent to what the CEO might make in right. a publishing house. Yes. So, you know, we do have to think about money. Money makes the world go round. Yeah. It is not a high paying industry. You have to be in, in it in the end, either because you have other forms of money, independent forms of money, or you have a partner who makes money or something like that, or it doesn't matter. You love the world. The yeah. world gives you huge flexibility. Yeah. So if you're a woman, I've had two children through my time at Jagannath. Mm -hmm. And while it's been difficult, it's been totally manageable. I think that if I had a high flying banking job, it would yeah. be far harder. Yeah. Uh, uh, and so in many, many ways, your life can be very flexible. Wonderful. Great to hear that. Thank you so much, Chiki Sarkar, for your time and more power to you and to Jagannath. And we hope to see lots of hits at a big hit list over the next few years. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much. That was a pleasure. I really enjoyed it. Bye. So that, ladies and gentlemen, was the fascinating story of Chiki Sarkar, who set up and runs Jagannath Books and tries to reorient the way reading uh, as, as a hobby, reading as a venture, reading as a business, and publishing as a business is being conducted in India. Uh, you heard her talk about the various challenges she went through and how she pulled herself together and steeled her way through and has today made Jagannath a huge success. I hope that inspired you, excited you and set you thinking. And if it did, don't miss the previous episodes of The Road Less Taken. This is season three. We've had 19 episodes in seasons one and two and other episodes in season three as well. All episodes in full as well as highlights are available on our YouTube channel, Nexus Consulting and on our social media pages on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. Uh, don't forget to look us up, sign up to our programs. And till I see you on another episode of The Road Less Taken, this is Venki Srinivasan saying, stay home, stay safe, take care and bye-bye.